Hi, I'm Corey Anko, an assistant curator here with the Draper Natural History Museum at the Buffalo Bill Center in the West. And today, we're going to be discussing several myths and realities surrounding antlers. Thank you for joining us. Make sure to hit that subscribe button for more stories and content on the American West. Antlers are some of the most fascinating physical characteristics of cervids, or mammals that comprise the deer family. But what exactly are antlers? How do they differ from horns? What evolutionary purpose may they serve? And lastly, why are there no antlered females? Or are there? Over the next few minutes, we're going to discuss several facets that make antlers such a unique organ. Antlers, like this elk antler, are deciduous, meaning they are grown and shed annually, like some species of trees. Horns develop from a bony core, like in this bighorn sheep. So the first myth I'd like to talk about is whether or not pronghorn antelope have antlers or horns. And this gets really interesting quickly because of course in nature there's always exceptions. And the first exception here is that pronghorn are not true antelope. But that discussion deserves its own featured video at a later date. What makes pronghorn really interesting is that the pronghorn is neither true antler or true bone. In fact, it's a keratin sheath with a bony core. So like antlers, the sheath here is shed annually, but pronghorn sheaths are composed of keratin, and keratin is a structural fibrous protein that is also responsible for hair, your nails, and of course, horns. But what's even more strange is that when pronghorns shed their keratin sheaths, they leave behind a bony core, much like a horn. And so in this sense, they're not quite antler and they're not quite horn. So that said, what are antlers and what are their physical characteristics? Well, antlers are bony because, as you may imagine, they're composed of bone. Antlers develop from a main beam, which is what we see here. And along that beam, they sprout tines. But do antlers develop as a hard, rigid structure from the start? You might be surprised to learn that antlers are relatively soft and porous, like a sponge, as they develop in a soft, nutritious tissue known as velvet. The velvet helps with circulation of nutrients and blood into the tines and the extremities of the antler. Once the antlers finish developing in velvet, blood supply begins to be cut off at the pedicle, causing the velvet to dry up. Which leads us into our next myth, that an insatiable itch causes deer to rub their velvet off on branches. And while there may be a grain of truth to that, the more likely reason is that it's due to the smell. As that velvet dries up, that soft tissue literally begins to decompose, which you can imagine leads to a, a rather unpleasant smell that one could attract insects, but worse, potentially predators. Another really fascinating component of antlers is that they are one of the fastest growing and regenerative organs that we know of. Once antlers are shed, they begin to regrow in the spring at a rate of three quarters of an inch to an inch and a half per week. The form and shape that a set of antlers takes is dependent on the age of the animal, its genetic makeup, as well as its access to quality nutrition. But perhaps the single most important factor that will impact the size of a set of antlers is access to quality habitat. You see, antlers are primarily composed of protein, calcium, and phosphorus. Protein is acquired through the environment, through its diet. And calcium and phosphorus is drawn from the skeletal structure in a process known as mobilization. And therefore, as those nutrients, calcium and phosphorus, are depleted, the only way that that animal can replenish those nutrients is through dietary intake. So that furthers the importance of quality habitat and forage for these organisms. Now let's talk about deformation. There are several reasons why antlers may show abnormalities or deformation. The most common reason is damage to the pedicle, and that is the portion of the skull at which the antler or organ begins to develop. Damage to this region could hinder or prohibit the normal growth of the structure. Another common reason that we see abnormalities or deformations in antlers is damage in the velvet phase. Recall, as I mentioned before, that while developing in velvet, this structure is relatively soft and porous like a sponge. If antlers are damaged in the velvet phase, they tend to express abnormalities. Perhaps less understood is when a cervid suffers an injury to one of its legs. Interestingly, an injury to a front leg 
could result in a deformation on the same side of the body. So a left injury could result in a deformation on the left antler. However, an injury to the hind leg could result in a deformation on the opposite side of the body. Our best understanding as to why this happens is that the deformation is related to nerve damage and consequently blood supply to the organ. But do only male members of the cervid family develop antlers? Well, this is simply not true. Caribou are a famous example. Caribou are the only members of the cervid family where females regularly develop antlers. However, elevated testosterone levels in female cervids can lead to the development of antlers that never leave the velvet stage. There are many speculations about what is the purpose of antlers. A common one is that they're used in defense of predators. But if that was the case, we would expect all female members of the cervid family to express this characteristic. Another purpose that they may serve is that particularly for the larger cervids like moose, elk, and caribou, that large structure may help aid in temperature regulation by increasing surface area and heat exchange. And we also know that antlers as well as horns can be used as tools to uncover vegetation and gain access to food in snowy climates. But antlers also have a really important role in reproduction. For one, antlers can be a display of dominance to other males in competition for females. Additionally, antlers can be a signal to potential females of genetic and physical health or fitness. But shed antlers also serve a purpose. Antlers primarily composed of protein, calcium, and phosphorus become quite the bounty to ground-dwelling rodents. But it's not just ground-dwelling organisms like rodents that benefit from antler sheds. In fact, shed hunting is a rather popular activity for backpackers and recreationists who use antlers in everything from tools, decor, furniture, and much more. And like many stories of the American West, with antlers, there's more than meets the eye. That's all I have for you today. If you liked this video, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel for more great content on the American West.